one. So before we officially start this whole entire session, we'll just go through the agenda so we can set some expectation. In the agenda for today's session, I'll be going through the guidelines. So today's talking talk session is slightly different, so the guidelines are slightly different as well. Um, then we'll move on to introduction where we get to know more about Kitty and her business Kids Creations. And then we'll move on to the main sharing session where we learn more about Kitty's entrepreneurship journey. And then the Q&A session is where we will be answering all the questions that you have for Kitty. And also the closing is where we'll be sharing the next Talkie Talk session and also our new upcoming um, event that's coming up in August. All right. So before we start, the guidelines are um, this Talkie Talk session, if you would like to communicate with all everyone in the chat, please do change your setting to all panelists to all panelists and attendees. That way, your, the attendees and the panelists get to see your comments or any Q&A that you might have. And if you are not familiar with the webinar setting, and if you have questions, please leave them in the chat and our team will be collecting all the questions. And if you are familiar with the Q&A option, you can also include your Q&A in that, in that box as well. Yeah, so whichever is comfortable for you, you just go ahead and use the settings. Yeah, all right. So without further ado, I think we can um, officially go into the main sharing session. So my name is Cindy. I believe those who are regular Talkie Talks will know me and those who don't know, my name is Cindy and I'll be your host today, yeah? So welcome to Talkie Talks. So Talkie Talks is essentially a series of sharing session where we actually invite small business owners such as Kitty herself um, to come and share a bit about why the motivation behind why they start their own business and also their journey as an entrepreneur. Right. So this sharing session is actually brought to you by RICE. So RICE is a Malaysian research and social outreach project that empowers youth through entrepreneurship. And RICE is supported by City Foundation. So we hope through Talkie Talks that we are able to showcase small business and actually highlight small businesses in Malaysia to kind of change the perception that entrepreneurship is only limited to big businesses, you know, like big businesses that we know out there, yeah. So hopefully through Talkie Talks, we get to show, showcase and kind of highlight all these stories and hopefully you get to find out more about small local businesses in Malaysia as well. So without further ado, I'm happy to welcome Kitty today from Kids Creation. Hi, Kitty. Hi. Thanks for having hey, so me. Thank you for coming. It's such an honor to have you here talk to us today. Thank you. Okay. So I think before we move on to knowing more about your entrepreneurship journey, Kitty, could you share a little bit about your business kids creation? Um, you know, where what do you guys do? What kind of service do you guys offer? And how do we can find out more about kids creation? Right. Uh, kids creations actually um, deals a lot with wreaths. It started out that way. Uh, I make wreaths and sell them. And together with it, I sell table decor as well. And because um, this started sometime before Christmas, uh, most of the wreaths are, of course, Christmas wreaths and Christmas table decor. Um, but of course, since then, we have made a lot more for Chinese New Year, for other occasions, uh, including weddings, memorials, baby showers. We do take custom orders. So um, it is now not limited to just wreaths. Uh, table decor as well and in time to come hopefully we will branch out into more things but taking it one day at a time right thank you so much for sharing about um, what kids creation is about um so if let's say i would like to order a wreath right a custom wreath or i just like to um, look at your catalog where can i find out more or how do i contact you okay um most customers that i've had usually uh message me, DM me on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, of course, I have friends who will just uh, text me privately as well. Um, my phone number actually is uh, available. So people do text me for orders as well. Um, catalog, I do not compile a particular catalog, but all my reads are posted on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, because it is uh, handmade, there aren't many of each design, perhaps about two to three units of one design. Mm -hmm. And also um, because it is individually handmade, you will not find two that are identical. They may have the same theme, but uh, they won't be identical. So um, custom orders will come in like that. They will look at what I have there on Instagram and they will tell me I would want something like that. 
And so I will speak to them, chat with them about, you know, what they would like to add, subtract and things like that. It is quite a nice journey. And in the end, when they get what they actually want, it's very rewarding. Mm. Thank you so much for letting us know about how to contact you. So if anybody is looking to kind of brighten their whole lockdown experience or you have a special <laughs> occasion that's coming up and you think that a reef would be a great gift for somebody that you know, you can please go and find out more about Kids Creation and even DM her as well via Instagram, right? All right, so um, now we've learned a bit more about your business, Kitty. Um, can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about... Um, what actually inspired you to take that first step to start your own business? Um, actually, uh, I suppose as a, a mother and as a wife, uh, you always want to spend a little more time with your family. So I would say one of the inspiring uh, factors would be flexibility. And it also is because I come from, uh, well, I'm working full-time actually, Kids Creations is a side hustle. And my full-time job doesn't, uh, doesn't give me a whole lot of flexibility. It is a nice job, but it is a nine to five desk job. So uh, being a mother and a wife, like I said, you know, you do want to spend more time with the family. And then that's how I started thinking perhaps um, I could work something out on my own, you know, give myself a little bit more flexibility and everything has to start with the first step. So that is why I have started with it. I won't say that I am uh, done or even half done at all, but at least, you know, mm -hmm. the first step is taken and um, mm -hmm. yeah, we build from there. Mm, so in a long haul, the whole vision for Kids Creation is to be uh, a revenue for you to give you more flexibility in your day-to-day -day life. Yes. And eventually, mm. God willing, I would like to make this a full-time thing and not just a side hustle, God willing. Right. Right. <laughs> so um, I believe when we were talking about, yeah, like when you're talking about learning more about your business so we can do mm. a bit more promotion for your session, you mentioned how it actually you actually wanted to make kids creation into a baking a business, but it kind of took a turn. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit more about how did that actually happen? Okay, well, actually... Um... It also started from the time when, well, this was a long time ago, and mm -hmm. there was a time when I was retrenched from uh, a full-time job. Uh, so, you know, I had all the time in the world to think about what I wanted to do. And I thought, I, I love reading as well. So I thought, okay, maybe a sort of a reading corner uh, mm -hmm. with cookies and cakes would be nice. Mm -hmm. So it's like a baking business with a reading corner. I even had a name for that. <laughs> so... Um, was getting quite serious but then again I found out that I was quite a poor baker so there goes that idea <laughs> um, but at the same time because I was retrenched I, like I said I had a lot of time and nearing Christmas I started to make uh, wreaths mm. and decor and uh, but that wasn't exactly for sale if I'm not mistaken that was quite a long time ago if I'm not mistaken I did sell some and I did give some away to church members and all that and now, coming, to, uh, coming back to think about it, the wreaths that I made then were nothing like what it is now. But that also was a first step. And that's how it got me going, actually. The, the wreaths improved uh, over time. And after a while, my friends and my family actually did say, if this is actually your passion and you're making quite a few of uh, wreaths now, mostly Christmas mm -hmm. wreaths at that time. And they say, if you're doing that much, why don't you consider selling it? So that's mm -hmm. how I got the thought and, you know, the inspiration. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of chewed on it over time. And that's how it started. That's where it is now. Right. So it wasn't like you weren't intention about starting the business, but it kind of, along the way, you kind of get inspired to actually make it uh, to a business. Correct. It is a passion because after a while, as I started making more, then uh, as the idea started coming, the inspiration that I get, um, yeah, then I feel that it is definitely a passion. And as I'm making mm -hmm. those reads, I also feel that it's therapeutic for me. Right. So that's how I thought it is good to probably make it uh, a side hustle first before right. considering to take it another step further. So how did you actually stumble upon wreath making? I mean, it's not very conventional 
craft or a path of art that people might usually conventionally pick, right? Some people like to do painting, some people like to do um, pottery, yeah. but why wreath in, in specific? Yeah. Actually, you're right. Uh, and that is why also when I try to look for ideas and inspiration online now, uh, there's not a whole lot on the local front. Mm. Uh, there might be a lot of wreath makers in the United States, especially, right. uh, mm. even in the UK, but you don't find many in Malaysia because it's not something that people do very much, you know. Mm. Um, and how I stumbled upon it, I didn't exactly stumble. Like I said, uh, because I had time on my hands and it was near Christmas, I started making my own wreath. And mm. that's how it is, you know, when, when you find that you are good at something or you're beginning to be good at something, you want to keep going at it. And that's what right. I did. Uh, of course, the first few reads were horrendous. They look terrible. But after that, but it is good starting horrendous because after that, you can see an improvement. So right. when there's an improvement, your passion starts to grow. And that's how mine mm. grew. And I like, you know, Christmas is such a festive period, right? right? And everybody is in the mood to go out to buy gifts, to buy wreaths, to buy decorative uh, stuff. So that's why at that time, I thought that's a good time to go out to, to explore, to buy things, mm -hmm. to bring back, to do it myself. And it actually worked. So that's how I actually discovered my passion. Mm. Hey, thank you so much for actually sharing to us why you actually started off with um, the wreath business. Since we're on the topic of inspiration and what actually inspired you, I would like to pick your brain a little bit since you are an entrepreneur and you've been doing this for quite a amount of time. Um, what would, who would you say is an entrepreneur that actually inspired you like business-wise or you really admire how they actually run their own business? Okay. Um... To be quite frank, I don't know how this person runs her business, but I drew inspiration from her because she was a homemaker. Mm. Uh, her name is Ree Drummond. I'm not sure if many people know her. She's also known by the name The Pioneer Woman. She is actually a, a chef, a cook, a baker. But all this started, she, she has now got quite a big business, but it all started from her sharing recipes on her blog. And mm. she is uh, in the United States. She's in Oklahoma. She's actually a wife to a cowboy, literally, who owns a ranch. And she has four children. So she's pretty much always at home. And mm. uh, she just decided to write recipes, share recipes. She's a good cook. And I followed her on her recipes and all that. And it worked. And she has a blog. So mm. I've been following her and realizing that she writes very well. Because it's not just about... Uh, giving you a recipe. In that recipe, while she's writing it and sharing it with us, she actually gives us uh, peeks into her family and into her life. And that was how I got mm. attracted to her. So as I was following her, I realized uh, that the business was growing. She's now mm. on Food Network. She's a judge on certain shows. She's got mm. her own, uh, she has published many cookbooks now. Uh, before that, she hadn't. Um, and all that. So I could see her growth. And not only is she a judge on, on TV reality shows, she's, I think she also has her own channel where she cooks mm. and she, you know, bakes and all that. And here I am thinking from just being a homemaker, because of her love for food and her passion, she can make it grow. I know a lot of people might think that's not much of an inspiration, is it? I mean, she's just mm. a homemaker. So if she has nothing to do, she, she starts this. Actually, I, I beg to differ. I think that it is not easy, it's not always easy for a homemaker to step up and go into business because, especially like in the case of Ree Drummond, she has four children. And you know, um, in the US, you don't get mates like we do or, or domestic helpers yeah. like we do here in Malaysia. It's not easy. So, you know, practically she manages her family and everything else. But she's able to actually do something on the site and make it big. It is not easy because being a homemaker, it's not easy to come out of a comfort zone. I think we mm. all can relate to that in okay. some way. We have our own comfort zones. Maybe it's not that we are homemakers. The home is not our comfort zone, but we do have some comfort zone and it's not easy to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So for her, I feel to step up and to actually grow a business to what it is now, it's really remarkable. 
from that short description itself, you make her seem so inspirational to everybody, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, so you find her very relatable to your situation. That's why you take her as a sort of inspiration. Yep. Great. That's such a, thank you so much for sharing so much about her and really uh, breaking it down to the audience to really understand why you take her as an inspiration. Thank you so much for that. Hopefully you get to inspire somebody to actually start reading her song. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So now we've learned a bit more about, you know, your inspiration behind your business and why you actually start your business. Um, I want to focus more on to the challenges. I believe that with anything that we start that's new, there's always challenges, right? And I believe you mentioned just now that wreath is not really a, a conventional concept or a conventional mm. thing that a lot of Malaysians are exposed to. So did you face any challenges when you first actually started your whole business? Yeah, actually... Um there are two challenges that seem to be like jumping out at me. The first is, of course, um, because I have a full-time job, uh, to work full-time and to have the side hustle is actually very challenging. And at the same time, you're managing a family. So I would say that is one of um, the biggest challenges. Uh, the other would be, like you say, because wreath is not con uh, conventional, or rather it is not often used as a decorative item here in uh, Asian countries. Uh, so I do think that there is a slight challenge in um, changing people's perception. Uh, I have come across a segment of society who um, more often than not view wreaths as something that is associated with funerals with wigs, oh, okay. you know, and, mm. you know, some, some Chinese, are maybe not just Chinese, but some people do feel right. that way. Um, so you're right. Sometimes it is um, people's perceptions that we have to change. And this is not something that we can do straight away. So right. it will remain a challenge for a while. Um, but the, the bigger challenge um, when Kids Creation started was as I mentioned just now, the challenge of having a side hustle when you're working full time. That is the bigger challenge. So do you have like any tips on how do you actually balance between this? I would say also looking after a family is also considered like a full-time job, right? So how do you actually balance between three different avenues in your life and manage to keep sane as an individual? <laughs> well, um, thankfully, really thank God for that, that um, I, I only have one child and she is now uh, in her teens. So she doesn't need to be looked after like a little girl, you know, so um, she's independent. So that's where I am fortunate. I can leave her to do, I mean, I keep an eye on her. I leave her to do her thing and, you know, I just check back on her. Um, and of course, the other thing is uh, I've got a supportive husband. So um, while I'm into my craft and into this business, he's helping out in any area that he can. And in fact, mm. uh, uh, speaking of my husband, he's actually quite a silent, quote unquote, silent partner in this business. Because as you know, in any business, um, there are different processes. Sorry to digress a little, Cindy, but um, just- No, no, uh, no, no, no. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> as a matter of explaining, I mean, there are so many processes uh, to make a business mm -hmm. successful, right? So um, the part that I'm largely in charge of would be the, the creative part of things. You know, the, the, the other part of things which I find is equally important mm -hmm. is the administrative part of things. So while I do uh, the mm -hmm. thinking, the putting things together, you know, I have to think of a theme, I've got to put the wreath together, I've got to see if this matches with that and all that. And after the wreath is done, I'll have to think of a name. I also do the photography myself. I think of a name for the wreath, post it up to social media. So all that I'm in charge of. But the other part of it uh, is a whole different world. It is, you know, sourcing for supplies, uh, keeping the inventory, you know, keeping stock of things, managing things, packaging, things like that. It is my husband who does it. I don't. So, yeah, I think uh, he and I work very well uh, together. Mm, so uh, while, uh, as you were saying, you know, managing 
uh, the challenges and all that, being a mother and, and all. So that's what happens. Thankfully, I do have a child who's old enough to take care of herself. I have a husband who's supportive, so I'm managing well. Um, the other thing is, of course, my full-time job can be quite uh, stressful. And sometimes it is juggling between, uh, time juggling between the full-time job and mm -hmm. uh, what I have to do for kids creations. Uh, sometimes time is an important factor. Uh, but I do realize that to overcome that, uh, we plan, you know, we do mm -hmm. extensive planning, uh, put pen to paper, um, you know, write down the ideas of how, what should be done. For instance, um, just a, as an example, uh, because we do take custom orders as well. Uh, instead of just uh, accepting and accepting orders, we could uh, design like a time frame, you know, a certain number of months. Okay, this is when I'm able to take orders. Um, anybody is welcome to place an order, a custom order, especially during that time and make a, an earlier announcement to say, okay, once September ends, then uh, we will have to stop taking orders because then we will have to concentrate on Christmas treats, for instance. So, you know, it is a matter of how we announce ourselves or how we, uh, you know, let the public know uh, what we can do and what we can't. I think it is also important to be honest when we can't do something instead of right. over-promising and not being mm -hmm. able to deliver. Mm. You know, so I think a lot of it has to do with planning and has to do with um, announcing it so that mm. people know and they, they won't just come at the last minute, things like that. Mm. Right. So, so it's about good support system, um, good planning, good strategy, and always yep. being knowing your limit as an, a business owner. Yes. Mm. Right. Okay, that's, that's really good tips. I think you've already given four tips and we've only started <laughs> this whole session. <laughs> yeah. So now we've learned about, you know, uh, the challenges you faced when you first started. And I know a lot of business has been impacted by the pandemic one way or another. Um, could you share a bit about um, how did the pandemic actually affect your business? And like with the uncertainty that is still caused by the pandemic, um, still present now, you know, seeing how it has dragged on, how do you plan to actually kind of maintain or maybe grow your business in the future? Um, when we first started, uh, it was during the pandemic, it was last year, um, mm. but the later part of 2020, uh, so at that time, I must say we were not adversely affected. We were not badly affected because it was mm. nearer Christmas. And that's when uh, people begin to get in this festive mood. You know, they want to uh, order and things like that. And because, like you said just now, I think, you know, it lifts the spirit when you have something cheerful, something beautiful to, you know, mm. hang in the house and all that. So uh, we got quite a lot of orders uh, during that time, Christmas time. So it wasn't a challenge at all. Um, the challenge is actually now, this year. Uh, it is much quieter now compared to last year, but I think it is to be expected. Uh, we were prepared for this because um, there are a lot of businesses and a lot of individuals actually suffering. They are just mm. trying to survive, right? And it is understandable that when the situation is already like that. Uh, nobody would want to spend money on decor. It doesn't make sense to, and, and I completely understand that. Right now, people are either trying to survive themselves or helping friends and family to, to survive. And they might be helping, you know, fund somebody. And I think it's a good thing. So we are not exactly pushing to grow our business now. Uh, that, of course, does not mean that, you know, we don't welcome growth. We're just being very realistic and thinking okay. now is the time to just uh, wait, just be patient. And while we are waiting, we are, of course, uh, brainstorming ideas, strategies. We're talking about uh, the future of the business, the journey, uh, what we can do next. You know, so when things pick up a little eventually um, or return to some degree of normalcy, then we can actually execute the plans that we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. So it is not exactly a bad thing. It is a downtime for us, yes, but right. it gives us uh, the, the time and the space to further explore 
ideas and strategies and, and loads of other things. Mm. Right. So you, your, your, your goal now as a business owner is just to grow internally as a business, right? Then only wait for the right opportunity. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a good tip, especially with those who are, you know, even if it's not business and you're really struggling, you know, take this time, like what um, Kitty said, to kind of uh, reflect and kind of uplift and kind of up, like, upskill yourself while you're waiting for a better opportunity. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing about um, the struggles that you have. You know, um, I think we can go on and move on to more um, brighter and more lighter topic for this <laughs> whole session. Uh, my question, my next question for you actually, Kitty, is what is your business proudest achievement to date? Anything that made you go like, wow, this is something that I didn't expect and this is something I love? This session actually. Talky talks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why I say this is my proudest achievement is because of the purpose and the target group. Because you all are empowering youths, young people, and that is something I feel is very important. The young people should be equipped. You know, um, I feel that I don't know. I I have a passion for uh, young people, whether they are in their youth or they are even younger children. You know, I even before Kids Creation started, I've even explored ideas like, you know, um, uh, early childhood education and things like that, because mm -hmm. I think it is something really good. I love to teach children. So, you know, I so when you first approached me for this, I thought, wow. And I, I looked up what you all have done and um, interviews with the other business owners and how you all are empowering youth on the whole. Uh, sorry, on the whole, I think it is a marvellous thing that y'all are doing and I'm really proud and really honoured to actually be invited to talk. So this is my proudest achievement. Well, thank you so much for putting Talkie Talks as your proudest achievement. I think we also... Uh... We're also very honored to have you here, you know, having another business that is different to share about. So thank you so much for <laughs> sharing. <Thank you. laughs> so thank you for that. I think um I think the whole Rice team is internally crying at the moment from <laughs> all this sharing. Um touched by this <laughs> um acknowledgement as well. Um so now since you touch you touched on a topic about how you have a passion to share um to young people about um how they can upskill or empower themselves. I think my, my last question that I have for you before we actually move on to the Q&A is as an entrepreneur yourself, do you think young people should actually start their own business? Um, I gave that some thought and uh, it's a yes and no answer. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, if you're doing it for the right reasons. Youth uh, or young people must understand that starting a business may not be difficult, but making it last is difficult. You know, the, the journey, actually walking through it is not easy. To start it, anybody can start anything. But if you are looking to build something that lasts, then it requires a lot of effort. And uh, of course, if young people uh, do have that burning desire they want to give back to society or to the community, then uh, by all means, especially if they are already equipped uh, in knowledge and um, whatever it is that they need for their business, if they are equipped with it, then, then yes, I would say that uh, they should go for it because, I mean, it is advisable and, or rather there are advantages doing things when you are young compared to when you are nearer retirement, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, your drive, your, your um, how would I say, not just the drive, but also the enthusiasm, the creativity, the risk appetite, the risk tolerance, all that is definitely different when you are young compared to when you are near retirement. So right. in that sense, I do think it's a good idea if you start young. But of course, like I said, you have to be prepared to really uh, go that extra mile because it definitely is not easy. Um, no would be, if I say no, it would be if the young person is uh, over-influenced by social media or think that this is the trendy thing to do. 
then I think um, there's going to be a lot of trouble there because this is not how it should be. Thank you so much for touching on the topic because really uh, emphasize that trendy is not always the right, <laughs> right path for us to go as young people. No. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for kind of sharing your insight and your opinion about this topic, which I think a lot of young people, sometimes they need this in order to decide whether the next step of what they have to do. So thank you so much for answering all my questions. So that's all the questions <laughs> I, like I have it. for you personally. Uh, we'll now move on to the Q&A session where I'll be answering the right. audience's question. So we have a couple, quite, have quite a lot actually, but let's, let's go through one by one. So the first question here is, um, what would you say is your future goal for your business? Okay, my future goal for my business would be to actually make kids creations a household name. That mm. uh, it is something that people know or, you know, when you mention and they're like, ah, I know what it does. That is my goal as to where uh, the, the nature of business as in what I would like to sell, I'm sure that could expand. And I would like to expand, like I said, you know, it's not just the main festivities that we'll be concentrating on. We'll like to perhaps branch into uh, weddings and things like that. So uh, that's quite a different ball game, actually. I have spoken to somebody in that line before and I realize it is quite a different ball game and it is big. So um, of course we, we do hope to be like that, but uh, we should always be realistic. Mm. You know, for me, the future goal should always be to uh, for people to know who and what we are. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing about that. Hopefully, your your goal and your dreams for kids creation actually come true. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. So the next question is, when, when do you think you will be running your business full-time? Any specific indicators that will give you confidence? Um, my husband and I have talked about that before, and we are at the moment uh, giving ourselves a five-year plan. So mm -hmm. by the end of five years, I hope that things would be remarkably different. Thank you for that, for answering that question. So five years, it's hopefully we'll see the five years difference. <laughs> right. So the next question here is, you mentioned that it might be harder to sell your products during these difficult times. Have you ever thought of selling DIY kits for beginners? Um, that has actually never crossed my mind. Hmm. That has never crossed my mind. But I think now that you have mentioned it, that is definitely an explorable idea. <laughs> yeah. right, whoever asked because, this question, uh, you're just given Kitty a new idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, to be honest, um, we are always learning, right? Uh, whichever stage we are at mm -hmm. uh, in business, we are always learning. Um, moreover, Kids Creations has just started not long ago. So I, I foresee that my uh, learning journey is really quite long and I'm really still learning quite a lot now so that's why I don't always get ideas um, like this the DIY kit so you know now that you've mentioned it it does make sense perhaps that would be a good idea thank you right. <laughs> yeah thank you so much for giving her that idea um, hopefully <laughs> in the future maybe you'll get to buy the DIY kit uh, maybe because they're asking this question because they're interested in the DIY kit yeah <laughs> Yeah. So the next question is, any tips on working with a partner? It is so easy to have different opinions and then argue. Um, yes, because I've operated uh, on my own for so long and the only other partner I have is my husband. I can't exactly uh, tell you with current experience how it is, but I can foresee that if you have a partner, um, for instance, if I have a partner in future, uh, yes, of course, there will be challenges, right? Fresh set of challenges because of difference of opinion and things like that. But I also think that these are things that happen in ordinary life anyway, whether there's a business or not. And uh, when we have differences in opinion as a person, 
we would always try to resolve it amicably. We'll try to find uh, good solutions, work our way through and all that. And if we can do that as a person with a friend or with a partner, I don't see why we can't carry that into business. Mm. Mm. That's, a, that's a new way of seeing things. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. If you can solve any issues between relationship between people, you can also do it with your partner, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so the next question here is, how long does it take for you to make one of your beautiful wreaths? Okay, now that's a tough one because different wreaths would have, you know, <laughs> different things going on them. And so the time is, uh, mm. uh, I can't really tell, but I can tell you that it will take any time between half an hour to three hours. That would be mm. uh, a guide. Um, some with more things that go on top of it and uh, more ideas, or if you're trying to come up with a theme, uh, it might take longer than three hours. And also to, uh, not just the theme, but also, how would I say, uh, it also depends on the items that go on the wreath. Sometimes, uh, mm. how would I say, it is not easy to fasten. There's no one way to solve everything or to do everything one way. You know, some items have to be fastened in a particular way. Some items have to be glued. You know, some, some have to be, um, okay, when I talk about fastening, some would be with uh, wire, some would be with uh, something other than wire. So we've got all different materials coming in. So it's quite difficult to tell you what the time is, you know, that I need to do a wreath. Anything between half an hour for the easy ones and uh, to three hours or more. Oh, that's actually, I didn't expect it to be so short. Actually, it's quite short. One to three hours. I thought it was going to be like one week, two week. Wow. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, if you really do uh, just concentrate on one week, mm -hmm. that is the amount of time that's needed. One week is if you um, put it down for a while, you know, you come away to get mm -hmm. fresh ideas and then you right. go back to it. Of course, that happens too. Because sometimes you, you <laughs> work at it and it's like you're just hitting a wall. Uh, some things won't mm. fasten well or won't stick well. These are the realities of uh, craft. You know, mm. uh, it's it's ideal if everything works the first time, but they don't always. So it requires a lot of uh, right. patience. And like I told you just now, this is a learning journey for me as well. So I'm learning as I go along. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for answering that question. So as someone who started... Um, your business selling craft do you have any advice to someone who also wants to start a business in selling craft um, something that you would like to tell yourself when you first started or any tips you might have I see um, okay I would say uh, do not rush do not rush into it take your time to research take your time to try out to experiment uh, I can give you a tip now just to glue something, you can have 50 different types of glue. There's glue for wood, glue for plastic, glue for vinyl, glue for this, glue for that. So there are many, many things that we need to experiment and try out. So I would say, if you are intending to sell your craft, uh, do not rush, experiment, do it well. Uh, it is well worth the effort. Mm. So I hope that answers your question, whoever asked this question. Um, the next question here, um, so we have two more questions before we um, end. Um, sure. What is the most difficult part of being an entrepreneur? The most difficult part. Okay, I would say that um, the most difficult part could be uh, how would I say, uh, having a good uh, seller-buyer relationship. Uh, mm. I know that this is uh, not always talked about, but in reality, when you are a seller and you've got a buyer, a host of problems could take place. Um, you could have a very difficult buyer and then you have to relate to the buyer. You have to try and uh, give the buyer what he or she wants 
and you have to be uh, honest about it. There is, for me, there are no two ways about it. You have to be honest, you have to be sincere. So um, when you encounter difficult bias, you really need to remind yourself that uh, it is not about you, it is about them. And to strike a relationship and to have good communication, that is not always easy. Uh, so this, these are the parts of uh, business that people don't usually talk about. But in reality, it can, uh, I, well, I've heard friends even say it can make or break your day because they have encountered uh, buyers with such problems, you know, and with such demands that at the end of it, they no longer feel like going on with it. So these are very real problems. I would say that it is uh, quite a difficult part of being an entrepreneur. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much for that. I, I hope also we as customers actually learn how to be a bit more, um, to compromise a bit more and understand business owners as well. I think that's yeah. also very important. Yeah, I think that um, sums up the whole Q&A session. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for everybody for, for giving us your question and also thank you, Kitty, for answering all those questions. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. So everybody that was um, Kitty um, sharing about her business, Kids Creation, um, through Talkie Talks, brought to you by RISE and supported by City Foundation. So if you're interested to find out more about his creation or through this whole sharing session, you found that the wreath is the new thing that you want to buy, please go and check them out via the Instagram and drop them a DM if you like to order. Yep. So I think what really um, caught me or inspired me throughout this whole sharing session is um, Kitty's your, your output and um, view on entrepreneurship and life in general and how um, you look at, you You kind of em emphasize this throughout your session is to be honest and also to be uh, sincere as a business owner and also how you view having a downtime as an opportunity to grow as an individual and as a business, so which I think a lot of us can take away and actually bring home. Even if we don't want to start a business, we can apply it in our lives as well. So thank you so much for sharing about that. Thank you. So if you guys feel inspired Oh, thank you. <laughs> so if you guys feel inspired um, by this Talkie Talk session and you'd like to join us for our next Talkie Talk session, um, please do um, join us. Our next Talkie Talk session is actually with um, Akmal from Ampat Petang. So this is our first Malay session of the year. Um, so what um, Akmal's business all about, Ampat Petang is all about, is that he view that having good quality coffee can actually affect your productivity in your day-to-day -day life. So that's what he hoped to achieve through his business. So if you're interested and you would like to um, go for a Malay session, you can register via the bit.ly bit slash abad batang. Yeah. All right. So we actually have an upcoming event that's actually happening in August. So it's actually a series of forums and also an Instagram live that we are creating for everybody of any age to join and kind of learn more about entrepreneurship. The first two sessions will be featuring six talkies in total, two different forums that's tackling two different issues. One is being a woman in, in the entrepreneurship world, and also um, three talkies will be talking about the world of social enterprises and what is social enterprise and how do you can actually start your own social enterprise as well. So if you want, if you're interested, you can, vis you can register for that forum through the bit.ly link. And if you're interested in more of the young perspective, perception of entrepreneurship, you can speak, you can join us in our Instagram live called Speak to a Youth. So Fatini is actually a college student as well as a business owner. So if you're interested in finding out more about this, you can find out more via our RISE program Instagram page. And if you'd like to keep up to date with what RISE or Talkie Talks is doing nowadays, you can always go and find out more via our Facebook, Instagram, and even our YouTube page. So thank you so much, Kitty. For, for joining us today and thank you everyone for being here thanks for having me thank you for coming okay bye guys thank you for coming bye, and see you everyone. in the next talk session bye thank you bye